Welcome back to Fat Chat. Now, this episode here is probably one of the biggest I've had for the whole trip. He's a genuine superstar of the AFL. He plays for uh, Melbourne. He's a three-time All-Australian, uh, two times AFL Coaches Champion Player of the Year. He's a Premiership player. He's an absolute bloody gun. Please welcome Clayton Oliver. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, mate. I'm so excited that we got to squeeze this in. So good. Thanks for coming. No, anytime, anytime. Yeah, how's, that? how's everything been? How's footy been? How's life? Um, yeah, going all right. Going yep. all right. I think the boys are seven and three, I think we are. Yeah. So, yeah, going pretty good. Um, yeah, obviously I'm having the other week. Yeah, out for a couple of weeks, but hopefully back for King's birthday. And uh, yeah, and you've been right. absolutely chopping it this year as well. One of the most in form, consistent, just like superstars this year. It's been so good to watch. Uh, and a big part of uh, of Fat Chat is talking everything like performance, um, improving your skills, and what it actually takes to be such an, an elite performer like yourself. So before we do that, let's talk a bit of footy. Um, we sort of you know know a little bit more about you. So let's kind of go right back. Um, tell us about what it was like growing up and your family and how you got into football in the first place. Um. Probably growing up, probably, probably just with Auskick, just yep. for the usual usual thing. Um, yeah, just like playing with friends and that. And then started in Echuca, probably on 12s. Yep, that's when it sort of started to yeah, really you sort know, of get all that sort of serious. stuff. Um, and then went over to Marupna, just yep. like with a few of the boys over there, which was good. And then uh, with the Pioneers, sort of like couldn't really get a game there. Yep. And then went to the Bush Rangers. Uh, How Darren, come you couldn't get a game there? Ah, uh, probably just a little bit, a bit fat, a bit unfit. Bit fat. <laughs> um, yeah. Were you really? Yeah, yeah. And then um, went to the Bush Rangers, and uh, Darren Ogier looked after me pretty well there. Yeah. And then yeah, lucky enough went to pick four. Unreal, unreal. Yeah. So, and so, did that kind of happen quite quickly for you, or was football always your main sport growing up? Or? Um, I played a bit of basketball. Basketball too. Yeah. yeah. So I did a bit, a bit of that growing up. Were you handy? Uh, I was all right. I couldn't shoot, though. Couldn't shoot. Couldn't yeah, shoot. Shocking. Shocking at shooting. Defense. That's all I got. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually all right defense. So I, can't, I can't defend in the AFL, but yeah, I was yeah. all right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good, man. So yeah. when was sort of the moment, like, throughout your junior days that you thought that maybe, oh, yeah, I could be a pro? Um, probably, nah, not at all. Not like, at all? Like, under 12s, like, I was all right. Yep. And then sort of plateaued pretty pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, didn't grow too much. Um, and then didn't make any of the squads or anything. Um, and then sort of got to under 18s, didn't make that the Pios, bottom age. Right. Went over the Bush Rangers as a top ager. And then sort of, yeah, didn't make the big country squad. Sort of a bit of a bolter. And then, yeah, sort of out of nowhere, just went pick four. Wow, that's crazy. We'll, we'll go into that a little bit more yeah. later about like exactly, you know, yeah. I guess the mindset that, um, you know, maybe getting knocked back from some of those teams would have uh, would have played for you. Yeah. That, that's how, I didn't know that. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And then you're such an elite performer now. So um, sort of back in junior days, was there any like uh, coaches that were real significant for you or any other clubs? Um, yeah, Blakey Campbell was, uh, yep. he was a senior coach at Marupna. Yep. And um, he had a fair bit of faith in me. As a bottom major, um, so I got to play as like a, a senior uh, in the seniors in Marupna. Um, yeah, that was just yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, he sort of put me in the right path, and um, yeah, I wasn't playing as, at Pioneers as a bottom major, which is what you want to do, like as a seventeen-year-old. Yep. And then yeah, Darren OG has sort of seen that, and yeah, I was lucky enough yeah to go over to the Bush Rangers as a top major, and yeah, I was literally no good there either. And then he sort of just played me round one. Um, wow. I don't know why. I was uh I was seriously fat. Like I was so I, I even even fatter. Um and so unfit. It was ridiculous. Wow. Yeah. So but obviously your your football skills or your craft or there must have been something that he's obviously gone, this this kid is the yeah, deal. I actually have no idea to be honest. Like yeah. I honestly have no idea. Like yeah. I didn't do my I did the first like maybe month pre season. Yeah. And then yeah, I got OP real badly. And did then you I, really? Yeah. So how old were you then? Sixteen. Uh, 18. 18, yeah. Yeah, at the Bush Rangers. Yep. And then, um, yeah, sort of, yeah, I didn't, I think I did like a week or two yep. of the 18s preseason, then sort of, yeah, played round one at the Bush Rangers. I sort of started on the bench and then sort of just worked my way into the team. And Wow. Yeah, it was, it was pretty pretty crazy. Like, and it sort of happened really fast like that. Like it just really picked up a lot of steam yeah. as soon as you got into that team. Yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. And then how did the draft all roll around? Um, did you know that there was going to be clubs interested? Did you, at what point did you kind of think, oh yeah, I'll, I'll go for the draft this year? Um, I honestly had no idea. Yeah. Um, I did make the country squad, which is what you sort of want to do. Yeah. Like all the boys. That puts you in a good spot yeah. to get yeah. eyes on you. Yeah. 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 So you did make that. It was a bit flat. And then uh, Richmond VFL... Gave me like a little uh, four-week stint there. Yep. I played two games there. Um, 
yeah, that was just really good. Great. Yeah, and I, they said they'd pick me up with their rookie pick, and I was just like over the moon with it, and I was like, wow, I'm actually wow. going to yeah, get like a, a year on the list in the AFL, and yeah, I was just stoked with that. And then um, sort of things just started rolling from there, and probably a month out from the draft, I reckon. Yeah. Um, I won the, the Morris medal, so yep. like the – that, is that the like BNF? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of won that, and then yeah, one thing sort of led to another, and I don't know. I don't really know what happened to be honest. Wow, man! I didn't know. I had no idea. Yeah. I just thought you would have been just a gun from from day one, and nah, you first picked nah, in the squad. Nah, definitely and, not. Nah, it sort of just came out of nowhere. And do you think that kind of really has made you the you know the competitor, and you've got that little bit of dog in you kind of thing now with your motivation and and uh, and your drive? Like because there were sort of those like early experiences, maybe not getting picked for the team, you had to really work. Or um, I think I think I've sort of always had that. Yeah, but I just sort of had a few injuries like. In the the, to, uh, the bottom age year and top age year, um, yeah, sort of always had that work ethic. Yeah, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. For my first year, I didn't really have any of those sort of like professional qualities. Yep. And then got sort of sat down by Brendan McCartney, and yeah, sort of got told that yeah, pull my head in and yeah, pretty much follow Billy Stretch around and do what he does, and yep. that's what I did. And like, sort of, he had like a little plan he does every day, and yep. sort of tick that off, and yeah, so sort just of, sort of. Did that for like, so what was the plan? Like the training and recovery, yeah, and just skills be, and just stuff. Been, he, he basically called it being the ultimate professional. Yeah, right. And um, yeah, it was yeah because I was eating terrible stuff and probably wasn't training that well, wasn't sleeping that well. Yeah, my skin folds weren't that great. Um, but Billy Stretches did everything perfect. Like he wow. just probably yeah, I've never seen anything like it. And then so I did all that for my second preseason. Had a pretty good second year. Yeah, great, unreal. So then run me through that plan. So what was sort of some of the changes? You you know, you glossed over it, but like give us an example of some of the things that you actually changed that first year. Uh, I was probably having just like Maccas or yeah. having just whatever, just eating just sh- like shocking food, like yeah. just terrible diet, um, just no extras, sort of like little things here and there. Um, sort of impl- implemented swimming, like I swam like maybe a K every Second day. Yeah. And then me and Sam Wiedemann in our third year, we did a K pretty much every day. Wow. Yeah, so that was... That yeah. was just those extras, just yeah. to, you know, just keep building the fitness, keep burning through a few cows, yeah. Yeah, a bit of, dis- bit of discipline as well. Um, and then, yeah, just, yeah, there was just all these probably little things, just like to, um, I don't know, he sort of, he, he sort of called it like the big rocks. Yeah. Like just sort of focus on that. But like just, I just didn't have anything to be honest. I had no idea about. So the big rocks, as in, as in, like the main things to work yeah, on, sleep, sort of thing? diet, yeah. yeah, literally like that, and then like all the little rocks to just like sort of fill up the rest of the jar in a way. Right. So then, so it's like, so the so the metaphor that you're talking about, it's that there's a jar and you need to fill it up. Yep. You can put these bigger rocks in. The bigger rocks are like, like you sleep. said, the sleep. So what are the big rocks? Sleep, training. Yeah. Diet. Diet. That's probably the main three. Three. Yep. And then all the other stuff is just, just, sort of, just sort of add in there. Add in there to build it up. Yeah. Great way to look at it. Yeah. So, no, that's really good. And I guess that's just sort of um, what I'm big about with all my clients and every all, all the successful people that I speak to on this. It's so much about your habits and your routine and how much. And it's just repetition and repetition of just doing those things over and over again. Yeah, just sort of building a bit of discipline as well. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So then how did like your first game come about? And what, what's your memories from like maybe early days walking into Melbourne? Who were like the big dogs uh, at the club that you're trying to impress? Uh, Nathan Jones, was he was seriously scary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I remember my first grand ball with him. He just, uh, I think he... Oh, me right in the throat? No. Yeah, just pretty much. Just like first grand ball and so I said, welcome to Melbourne Football Club. And I was like, gee whiz. Like, was that day one? Yeah, day one. Oh. And um, Jack Viney, um, obviously Gorney. Yep. Um, yeah, so yeah, they, they were pretty like, yeah, they're sort of the main main, main group. Yep. Um, but yeah, since then, like a the few, like, obviously track. Yep. Gussie have all sort of come through together now. Yeah, 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 for sure. Just pull that a little bit closer, I reckon, maybe. Yeah, 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 that's good. Yeah, perfect. Um, and um, uh, so, like, early days, how did that first game come about? Um, have you got any sort of early memories of, like, the stuff that you had to actually put in? You mentioned that you were working and, and doing the doing the stones and pull, yeah, yeah. filling up the jar. But um, how did that first game come about? Um, I probably shouldn't have played because Gussie Brayshaw got injured versus in Port yep. up in, I think it was at, uh Alice Springs or somewhere. Yep. He hurt his knee in that practice match and I was just like an emergency for that game. Yep. 
So he missed round one, and I sort of got into that game, like into round one basically just purely because of injury. Yep. So I was sort of pretty lucky to play that, and I played maybe three or four games and then got rested. Uh, I was sort of in and out of the team in my first year, um, which was probably understandable in a way, but I was sort of frustrated with it. Just, I don't know. I think everyone's sort of the same. Of course, you're just trying to figure it out, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you want to play every single game pretty much. Um, but yeah, I think I played 13 games and then went back to the VFL and played the VFL finals. We played in the VFL grand final and uh, we, we lost that. But um, yeah, it was sort of a bit of a learning curve. Just, I don't know, I just want to make the most of probably, footy isn't that long. And yep. I sort of reflect on that first year and sort of felt like I wasted it a little bit. Yep. I didn't really want to waste another year. Yeah. That's when Macca pretty much sat me down and, Said you need to do this and this and this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So as in terms of wasting the year, just because you didn't put some of those little bits, you weren't doing all the things that were made uh, required. Yeah, I probably wasn't doing everything possible to be yep. the best footballer. Yep. And then it, it's all very well like a coach sitting you down and telling you that, but like there's got to be something like internally that you, you know, you got to, re- that's got to reflect and hit you and go, oh yeah, fuck yeah, I've got to actually sort that. Where did that moment happened for you was it was that like from the first conversation and and that's what popped into your head you were like oh shit this could be over if i don't actually uh well i actually got caught drink driving which is pretty embarrassing uh, um when was that like maybe a month in after the season finished in my first year yep um that was probably the turning point yep. i was like i'm pretty lucky to be like playing afl football i can make the most of it so i got sat down by the club and then yeah that was probably the pretty, turning point. Yeah, yeah, pretty big turning Sliding point. Sliding a bit. Yeah, yeah. So in a way, it was... Probably... No, it's my phone. It's coming, oh, it's coming through here because I'm about to show you some videos later on. That's why. Oh, so. beautiful. <laughs> um, yeah, it was sort of like a yeah turning point just like in regards to yeah just how like, lucky I was to be playing AFL. It was just such a dumb thing to do. Um, but... Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that was the that was the turning yeah. point for you that you went okay, cool. No, that's Is great, it, and yeah. it's, and you know that some sometimes that's the moments that you need to really just switch that. Probably the worst. Yeah, yeah, it was just yeah, like it was obviously a bad thing. Sort of just taking a, a, a good what do you call it? like I said, take long a, long hard look at yourself. No, nah, taking a good thing out of a bad situation. A, a silver lining. Yes, yeah, silver yeah, sorry, silver lining. Yeah. I'm pretty bad with my words. Sorry yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, silver lining out of it, and yeah, I didn't drink for the re- in my second year at all because the club sort of suggested that, which was probably a pretty good idea. That was good, yeah, yeah. And but that takes a lot of commitment and, and a lot of you know dedication for you to you know commit to making you know changes like yeah. that to yourself, and that doesn't come from somebody else telling you. That comes from yeah. you know, deep within and go, yep, this is actually what I want to yeah. do. And I sort of felt like I owed the Melbourne Football Club a yeah. little bit too because they sort of took a punt on me pretty early in the draft. As in, like, because I came from nowhere, as I said before, like, yeah. I was literally like, yeah, like a nobody. And then I just sort of just shut up the rankings and somewhere went pick four. Still don't really it's know amazing. how that happened. Yeah. Well, I think they'd be laughing now going, beautiful. We've done, uh, yeah, we done the right yeah. thing, right? <laughs> still, still shocks me. I don't, I don't really know. I honestly have no idea what, what happened or how it all unfolded, but... Yeah, every week sort of just kept going up and up. Amazing, amazing. So then early days as well with games. Do you have any, like, from all – because you played just over 150 games now. Yeah. Um, is there any that, like, real stand out that you're like – obviously the grand final, we'll talk about that in a bit. Is there any other ones that you're like, that was my breakout game, that was my moment? Was there one that was just an absolute um, killer for you? Probably, I think round one in 2017 – we yep. had like 30, 35 or something against St Kilda, like just like that was just a big number game, yeah. Yeah, it was just a big number game. But it was the first game that I'd sort of had after a good preseason. I sort of realised that how hard you work sort of just pays off. And then the next week I played all right again. Um, but I don't know. There's yeah, obviously a few games out there, but yeah, obviously the Premiership's the main one. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, is there any like matchups that have been like your hardest ones throughout? Uh, is there any is someone that you match up on maybe like more than just one time? There's like an ongoing battle that you're like, oh fuck, I'm, I'm uh, playing on him today. Maddie DeBoer, Maddie Matty DeBoer, when he used to Rough. tag me, always used to tell me up. I don't think I've had over ten touches on him. Really? Yeah, yeah. he absolutely destroys me every time. Um, versus Cripper and Bont and. All those sort of players, fellas. yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty big, pretty strong. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm trying to think of else. Took me like unbelievably fit, like just runs all day. Yeah, 
Um, yeah, there's just so many great players in the competition at the moment. Absolutely. There's so, so now I'm, with doing fat chat, I'm actually part of like the back chat guys, right? That uh, Will Schofield's part of, right? Oh yeah. And he does, you know, sorts out the editing and stuff. Like that. Some of that, some of their episodes with him. So when I was like looking through and I'm doing a bit of research, I come across this great clip. Yeah, now. yeah. Now, yeah, now, yeah, now, let's talk yeah. about the clip, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, this yeah. clip here, it's gonna um, uh, actually, well, be um, chuck those headphones on so you can hear the commentary as we uh, as we do this as well, um, Larry. You know exactly what I'm talking about anyway, but I just want to relive it with you and I want your version of events. Uh, yeah, turn it that way. There we go. Perfect. There we go. All right. There's a little bit of niggle. Bit of niggle. Pretty much incident free. Clary comes over. Oh, oh, he's down. He must have got him a beauty. So Clayton Oliver down. So let's have a look. <laughs> it's all time. So, so th this is what this is what must have happened, and I'll, I want to hear your version, right? I can't wait to show Scoey. So, what looks like to me, big angry Scoey. He's a bit of an angry man. Yeah, he get a bit grumpy. Boy. He's yeah, a big, big boy. boy. He gets to be angry. So, a bit grumpy sometimes. And he's there, and he's uh, and he's gone for it, gone for the the cheap elbow on you. And it must have been so much force, so much um, that the wind from the elbow just, has hit you like yeah. a freight train. And that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, no, it's just, <laughs> just, yeah, it's one of the most embarrassing things in my career, I think. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to live that, live that one down. Oh, I think. so good. Um, yeah. <laughs> Did you get the free kick? Um, no, it was end of the quarter. So, like, so nothing, it was done. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tried to move on from that one. <laughs> Tried to move on from that one pretty quickly. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. I can't wait to show him oh, that one mate, back. Yeah, I cop that for. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you how long I copped that for. Oh, it's amazing, mate. Amazing. Yeah. Super funny. So let's go to the uh, the uh, 2021 grand final. It was over in Perth. I got to go. It was one of, you know, one of the best um, football memories that I've got. Tell us about that season and leading up to the game, and then we'll go into the game as well. What um, made the team so great that year? Yeah, so 2020, we sort of finished ninth, I think. We just missed out the finals. We lost to Sydney and Frio um, up in Cairns, which was sort of – Pretty disappointing. We probably should have played finals in 2020. Yep. Um, it was sort of a bit of a, oh, like a, yeah, a bit of a dagger. And we sort of sort of got together before the start of the 2021 preseason and had a good chat, sort of put to bed pretty quickly. And we sort of thought we had the talent there. And, um, yeah, we started off the season, I think it was like 10-0 and or 9-0 and or something. Yep. It was pretty incredible. Flying, yep. Um, yeah, and then we sort of went up and down, fluctuated a little bit. And, yeah, we sort of – did we go to the hub in – the uh, what, what, what year was the hub? Yeah, that was twenty twenty one. Yeah, like in the we were the finals. I think I can't, yeah. I can't remember actually because there, there was finals. There was a couple of consecutive finals in Perth. Yeah, you played the prelim as well in yeah. Perth. Round, oh, round sorry, yeah, round twenty three. Gorney kicked the yeah. yes. Yeah, sorry, about, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't remember. Um, yeah, that was unbelievable. Yeah. And then yeah, sort of had the finals, which was all a bit weird. Finished on top. We didn't get our home final. So in, weird. in a way, yeah. So played that in Adelaide and had a pretty good game against. Uh, Brisbane won that pretty comfortably. Pretty nervous watching other games. And then, yeah, the Geelong game was the Gorney special. Yes. Kick five. Snags. Yeah, yeah. great. I was uh, I was right behind one of the goals on the 50 at Optus when he's kicking those ones. What a game. And it must have been – because you guys smashed them as well. Yeah, it was like end. 80 points or something. Absolutely smashed them. So what did that feel like, like having that massive win? Yeah. Getting, and really Geelong like was looking – you know, the, the other side that could really take it out that year as well as Bulldogs as well. But they were really picking up some steam. Yeah, they playing was well. It, was it good knocking them off and going, oh, how good was that? What were you feeling rolling into the Yeah, it wasn't until the next night until we started watching the uh, the Doggies game and then they absolutely they smashed Port, I think. Yep. Yeah, so once we bet, obviously bet Geelong by a fair bit, I, we sort of felt a little bit confident and then we watched Doggies absolutely smoke. And you're like, oh no, yeah, so this isn't going to be easy yeah, as what we thought, yeah. yeah. So we got a little bit nervous for that, and then, um, yeah, obviously the final was just up and down, and then, yeah, that third quarter was just oh, electric. Yeah, it was crazy, insane. It was just, so, like, leading up to the game as well, were you nervous for the game, like on the game day, or you pretty like you're pretty set and you knew what you had to do, or um, the Geelong game, I was real nervous for. Yep, the prelim, I don't know why. I was just real nervous for that game. Um, and then the granny, I can't really remember too much. Like I was just, it was just sort of all a bit of a blur, like the night before and all that. It was just, yep. I don't even know what it was. Like I was just all over the shop, to be honest. Yep. Um, going to the ground was just, it was just all a bit of a, a bit of a buzz. Yep. But once the game started, it just sort of felt like another game. Yep. And then, yeah, it was, we started pretty well, obviously. And then 
they came back in the game. We went down by, I think it was eight points at halftime. Yep. Um, had a little chat in the rooms at halftime. What and was said? There must have been something awesome that was yeah, said. Yeah, I... We sort of just sat there and didn't really say too much. Like, everyone sort of has a different opinion of what we said. I can't really remember what we said exactly, but Gorney just sort of said, like, you know, we've, we've done a good preseason. Burjo's, like, got us in a good spot. Um, you know, we're fit. Like, we'll be right. And then we came out and we, I think Bond kicked his third goal and that was by 20 points. And, and it was not looking good. No. Yeah, I was sitting up in the uh, the family section because yeah. Luke got me some tickets. Uh, and I'm sitting there and I'm with uh, Mrs. Jackson, who's, you know, on the on the left there. And she's, you know, there's tears start to come on going, oh, no, this is bad. It was the most grim yeah. uh, seating yeah. block because there was all the families. Yeah. But then third quarter, all at like, you know, after that first five, ten minutes, whatever, just streaming right. through. Was, yeah, it was just one of the most crazy, like, Moments ever, yeah. ever, ever. I was just sort of one of those moments where the ball was just bouncing exactly where you need it to. Yeah, like hit someone's knee, would bounce out the front. We had like three or four just like clearances out the front, and track got an unbelievable goal from the boundary. Um, Harms, you got that little kick inside, it's harder, it's hard to kick that goal. Yep. Um, and then I got my goal at the end of the quarter. Luke out the rock, gets it, yeah. a little hands, great handball yeah. out, whack yeah, from 50. Yeah, it, it was just incredible. Like, we were just sort of all just like, what is going on? What honestly? is going on here? Yeah. yeah, and then I guess like once you've got that momentum going, there's no stopping that. Like, no. well, once you, well, for how much that like completely changed the flow of the game, that just must have been like, we've got you, three-quarter yeah. time. Oh, I think I was still about, or Maisie, was still screaming at us with about four minutes to go. We're up by about 50 points. He's, he's still screaming at us. He's, he's thinking we can still lose. And just like, to be sure. <laughs> yeah, I was like, mate, just chill out, mate. I think we got it. Yeah. We, got, we got it, mate. He's, he's, he's still like screaming at us. Um, but yeah, like the last probably like 10, 15 minutes, like me and Track were sort of having a bit of a laugh and we probably shouldn't have been, but it was, it was pretty much nice Just enjoying the moment, yeah. enjoying the whole thing. Yeah, it was incredible. So, Clayton, a massive part of this podcast is talking like all things performance related and like you've taken your game to, I mean, you've always been a star, but you've just been progressing and progressing and progressing all the way through and you you mentioned some of the stuff that you did early on yeah. uh, to really change all those training habits and getting the most out of yourself and I'd love to know even more about that in a few different uh, areas. So, let's maybe start off with like the physical training side of uh, footy for you. So, like what... What does like a week for you look like in terms of um, do you work? Are you working out in the gym? Are you mainly doing running stuff? Are like you doing- pre-season or in-season? Oh, let, let, let's talk about right now in-season. Yeah, what's it look like? Um, Obviously I'm, a bit different with the injury right now. Yeah. Um, In-season's uh, – sorry. Uh, sorry. In-season's a little bit easier. Yeah. So we've got the flush run on like a, a Monday, so we plan on Saturday. Sort of just a cruisy like – Actually, take that back now. Actually, we <laughs> someone's actually changed Monday it. Was fucked, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, someone's actually changed it. We've actually got we actually do a few strides now on yep. the Monday. I uh, just open the legs up, and then we've got probably like four or five seven minute blocks of just like sort of skills on a Monday, just yep. for our um, flash run. It's what we call it a fundamentals day now. Yep. And then Tuesday is just sort of upper body, sort of like stretching, bit of meditation, sort of growth, sort of like culture, sort of stuff. Yep. Um, and then Wednesday, uh, probably be our main training day. If it's a sort of a Saturday game, yep, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's yep. right. Sorry, Wednesday is the. I'm sure it does obviously change. Yeah, change when you um, yeah. when when the game is on the weekend. Yeah, we always have a our days off two days before a game. Yep. So Thursday's our day off, and then Fridays it will be like our captain's run. Yep. So that's pretty cruisy, and then yeah, obviously you've got game day. Yeah, for sure. And then like when you're looking at your own training sessions, your own sort of intensity that you'd bring to training, how's that kind of progressed over the years? Because like I said, you've been improving so much. You must have sort of changed anything that you've been doing or has it mainly just been following all the stuff from the club? Do you work with anybody outside for the pre-seasons and that sort of thing? Or um, it's, oh, I probably... You spoke about your obviously mentor early days as well? Yeah, I probably... Uh, I I just yeah I probably rocked up to training. I wouldn't go to bed that early. Yep. So I wouldn't be like feeling that great for training. So I wouldn't train that hard. Yep. And good use pretty, riding me pretty hard on that. I wouldn't train that well. Yep. Like I wouldn't sort of yeah. I actually was a terrible trainer, and he would always say that. But I sort of perform on the weekends, all right. And I sort of just thought that I didn't. Was okay. Yeah, but I didn't really realize that how important like training like to like a really high standard was. Yep. And then. Sort of watching Gorney track, um, 
behind just these boys is how hard they train. You're surrounded by guns as well. Yeah. That's the other thing. Yeah. So they so they were training really, really hard and I probably wasn't and probably wasn't um yeah, just doing the right things really. Yep. Um so sort of just that was sort of the main thing I reckon from I was I was at a good year in twenty eighteen, but still probably wasn't doing the right things. Yep. It's, it's like still. Sort of probably doing the, the little extra things, but sort of just my training was probably the main thing to change, I reckon. Yep. Sort of just preparing every like on Monday, Wednesday, Friday in a, in a preseason, like it was like game day and just really like committing to that. Yeah, for sure. And then in terms of like actual skills uh, with football, I mean, you're such a gun all around the ground and very all rounded with all the things you're able to do. Was there any point that, um, you know, you were told to go work on something in particular, like skill wise, whether it was like you kicking. Know, your kicking? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Was yeah. It? So how, how did that come up? Who told you that? Oh, uh, I caught I caught a fair bit of <laughs> slack for my kicking. Um, but, um, I don't know, like, uh, uh, yeah, look, uh, yeah, it's it's sort of, yeah, like, I just always cop stuff for my kicking, like, yeah. all the time, but Choco Williams came in last year, and he sort of said, like, you know, I need to start doing this and that, but a lot of my kicks, not making excuses, but they're sort of, like, sucking a contest. Oh, and, of course, they're getting yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I'm, obviously, it's not a great kick anyway. But, um, so, like, say when, you know, you got that feedback, is there any, like, uh, particular reps that you'd be putting in in training? Oh, I was, so like, I was, like, all the time. Yeah. Like, at the end of training, I'd be in the, in the like, change, uh, the, uh, the kick, uh, what do you call it? The skills group or an the, extra uh, No, like, the, the gym area, like, there's, like, yep. a little, like, handball board and all that. I'd be kicking there all the time. Yep. But it probably wasn't translating too much to games and stuff because it's just... Probably a little bit different. Yeah, I was going to say, because it's probably, it was more static stuff yeah. you're doing rather than... Yeah, and like we're sort of getting move. kicked and you're sort of getting pushed and sort of stuff. Yep. I don't know, so I sort of just... I guess it's pretty it's pretty hard to emulate that type of situation unless you're actually in that yeah. you know, moment. You've, like you said, you've got people pushing you off guard and yeah. shrugging tackles and that sort of thing. And that's not what you're doing when you're training. So, nah. it's, um, so you sort of don't really have that like two, three seconds to get the ball and yep. sort of like... Yeah, set yourself up. Yeah. But then Burjo in 2021 obviously came over and like got the boys a lot fitter and sort of like just sort of taught us to like drive our legs yep. and like get like forward. And it's probably that's probably how I sort of felt like I got that two or three seconds to like. So, so run me through that. So, it, so it was just driving and putting more weight forward. Yeah. Yep. As in like I was sort of getting the ball be flat footed and yep. I'd have to kick it. And then like I would be like under pressure all the time. But with Burjo, he sort of just like probably backed us in just to drive our legs and sort of test the tackle and yep. could use that as well. And then that sort of gave us that like bit Green of time. light to be able to try to, you know, shrug off and just explode. A yeah, and sort of have that time to kick, kick the footy. Yep. I feel like you have a bit of momentum going through the footy, you better kick it. Yeah, gotcha. That's, well, that's super interesting because like you said, it's so hard to emulate exactly that type when yeah. you're training. But um, even changing how you're thinking about, you know, the skill and, and pushing out the tackles and trying different things like that, that's how you've managed to make it work. Yeah. For sure, that's great. So, um, I mean, another massive part is like recovery. What do you do in terms of a week when it comes to recovery, whether you do – Ice baths, massage, um, meditation, mindfulness stuff as well. Yeah, I don't really like doing the meditation and mindfulness sort of yeah. stuff. It's Brain's like, a little bit spinny. Yeah, 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 I don't like doing that. Uh, a few boys like doing that, but yeah, I love my physios and like masseuses. Yep. Uh, I see, oh, I see someone outside the club that I probably don't put this in there, but <laughs> they don't really like it. Though. Yeah. I see a bloke called Tim Schlager; he's unbelievable. But it's, uh, but I think that everybody. Uh, every athlete that I've spoken to, you have to find the things that work for you as yeah. well because like it's all, you know, you can have the best plan but if that plan isn't maybe matching up with you or or you're not clicking with that yeah. as to 100% of what you could do, of course you want to try different things and work out what's yeah. going on for you. Um, perfect example, I had um, Blake Akers on. He doesn't do any warm-up. Nothing. Nothing really? for a game. So he doesn't do running. He doesn't do the run-throughs. He does nothing before a game. He's in the room and he does some kicks and handballs. And that's fine. That's what, uh, yeah. And and they've gone, yep, that's cool. No problem. That's what you do to get warm. David Mundy did it too. He learned it from David Mundy. Well, I, I got 
Definitely told him not to do yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah. He got told, like, yeah, you can't do that. He was saying because he's a cramper because he cramps up in his yeah, calves right. towards, the, towards the end of the quarter. So he goes so, too much. So the if he does, because like a warm-up, you might still do a K or two Ks. So he wants to save the Ks for later on. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah. So like stuff like that where everybody's so individual. And then you look at like American sports and the NBA and all these guys, and they've all got their own little things that they do. They, they bring their own coaches yeah, with them. Yeah, like, mate, they've got like personal assistants and all yeah. that. Yeah, it's crazy. It is crazy. It is crazy. So that's cool. So then what? So you got the massage? Do you do ice baths or anything? Like yeah, that? I like I love getting the ice baths. I like my swimming. I do like probably a k every second day in preseason. Still doing that? Yeah. Yeah, and then like six hundred and fifty meters. So it was like 10, 15 laps on. Yep. Yeah, probably my main training day and my day off. Yeah, right. So is that is there a pool at the club? Obviously, uh, at Amy Park. Just, Amy Park. Yeah, around the corner. There's not one in Casey. Not yet. Yep. Yeah, need to go on out there, which is a bit annoying. Yeah, yeah. Listen here, Mel. Wouldn't you better get one out? Yeah, yeah. Are already sick of driving yeah, in the yeah. city. <laughs> um, and then the ice bars. Everyone's getting in them. And then I love I love stretching. Actually, yep. Yeah, it's real good. Um, Has there been any um, particular types of stretching that have been really good for you? So, like, do you get do you get tight in your back or your hammies or anything particular that you've been working on? I just sort of went online and just sort of got like a sort of a stretching like yep. um, routine. Yeah, yeah. Sort of just sort of got all that sort of set up. Um, and then I just sort of do the same thing. I get like a real, real routine and just sort of like doing the same thing all the time. Absolutely. And on that routine, and it's so important having, you know, habits that you're doing over and over and over yeah. again for all these little 1% things. And you've mentioned it the entire way through of all these things that you've been able to stack on top of each other. What does your personal weekly habits look like? So you've obviously got the trainings and the structure for the stuff that the club gives you, but what are like you doing each week ritually and habitually to – get the most out of yourself um i sort of have like to have the same week every single week yep. like my mondays of my fundamentals day up is day i sort of have a list of things i like to tick off every day yep so yeah do you physically have a list and you tick it off as you go because that's what i do yeah i do on my phone that's what exactly what i do yeah. i just use notes and i write yeah, every literally, single thing literally, on my yeah i literally got like yeah i literally have so what's what's been completed this morning uh, I did And how good is it The yeah, feeling When you good. tick some shit off You put a big green tick yeah. Next to it You're like Oh Done yeah, it Just sort of like I have a walk A train And just sort of like Kick and touch Stretch Foam roller Pilates Just sort of all that sort of stuff I just like to go through And just tick it off Yeah It's just like I just love it. That's exactly what I do. Yeah, it's, just and, sort of, it's pretty satisfying and, as well. And I get it like as detailed as I possibly can. So like even if it was – so if I was training even, I go, okay, cool. If I was doing weights and a bit of gym that day, I'd go gym, weights. And yeah. And even I'd go breakfast first. And then just like as much little things as I can do, the more ticks – The better I'll, you feel. I look at the day and I go, yeah. I've done fucking 30 things yeah. today. Like, Every now and there's a few like um, – I'd just like to do like a little – A little carryover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, so I'd like a little cross. So yeah. I don't do, which is sort of frustrating. But I don't know, I just sort of listen to your body every now and again and just sort of think like – yeah. Should I do it or should I not do it? Absolutely. Yeah. And then how often have you done that for? Like you've been in the practice I, of, do, of, of doing your list. And uh, probably since 2021. Yep. Probably started doing that. Yep. Just sort of, I was in my head. I was doing it all the time. Yep. And then I just sort of started just doing it on my phone. And yep. Yeah, it just sort of keeps you accountable, keeps you disciplined. And Absolutely. It's probably more, I sort of feel like it's not like doing all those things don't actually make you a better player. Yep. It's probably more like the actual like discipline to keep doing yeah. them okay. and then it sort of builds a it builds the habit yeah yeah because yeah. then it's just become an automatic and then like even writing the list to start off the day yeah that's like the first thing on the list to do if that yeah. makes sense you don't even think about it you're nah. like I'm laying in bed I'm like, yeah. like before I, I wake up yeah I usually get up have a coffee and sort of just t- like I usually Type copy the notes yeah copy the notes from like another day yeah and just go through it. Man, I love that. I love yeah, that. Yeah, I love it's that. good. Taking yeah. shit off. That's yeah. good. So then you touched on it as well with some of like the mindfulness stuff. So you don't like the meditation side of things. Do you, have you ever worked with, um, you know, sports psychs or anything like that? Uh, and is there maybe an example of a game that maybe things weren't quite going your way and you're able just to sort of like mentally bring yourself back into the game a little bit more? Uh, what do you do if that happens? I had a, Well, against Essen, I had two touches or one touch in the first quarter yep. in the gather around. And end up having 40. <laughs> but I didn't play very well, which was, yeah, I thought it's a pretty average game. But um, I don't know. I just sort of sort of think that, like, once you have a bad game or bad quarter, like, like so be it. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's over. Like, sort of just move on from it. Like, can't do much about it. Yep. There's no point, yeah, worrying about it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So it's more of just like a, uh, like a next plane mentality about it. Yeah. And I sort of also think, like, you're due to have a bad quarter every now and again. Yep. 
And I just sort of think like, well, that's it. That's, that's it. I've had it. Yeah. Which is a weird, it's a weird sort of thing. No, it's true because there's a, there's a thing called an average to the mean. So it's like the example of it is like, say if you've got a dart board and neither of us play much darts and I throw a dart and I hit it in the middle first go, the chances of me hitting it in the middle because I'm not that good at darts again is like even more unlikely. And then you kind of average out the more you throw, the more you average. So I guess because you've been able to raise your game up so much and you're at that consistent level, like you said, if you have, if you're underperforming for a quarter, you ain't going to under, underperform for another quarter. Yeah, so or, or it's, it's less likely. Yeah, so it feels like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's really interesting, really interesting. Um, and um, is there anything else that you're doing away from the club, whether it be, you know, you said you're working with, um, you know, you got your massage. Do you do anything in the off-seasons as well? Is there anybody that you work with, any, anything different? Um, I wouldn't mind on that. I think Track does a little bit of that with the Red Bull stuff. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind on something like that, but I haven't yet. Um, yeah, the Red Bull stuff looks Sick, Looked unbelievable. Get like hooked up to all the yeah. stuff. You're on the treadmills. You're yeah, like, tracks the big dog. So I wouldn't mind on that. But nah, I just just sort of my own thing. Yep. Um, don't really train with the boys too much, which I probably should. Yep. Sort of just head back home from Tuka for whatever. Or go over, I went overseas with Christian Salem, which was good. Great. Where'd you go? Uh, we went to Portugal for a, a week or so. Portugal was good. Yeah. Yeah, it was beautiful. Um, went to London. Went to Scotland. Scotland. Scotland goes off. Nah, really? You, you didn't like it? Uh, it was good. It was just quiet. Did you go to Glasgow? Uh, yeah, yeah. Go, man, that was one of my favourite places really? I went to. Yeah. No, nah, we did nothing. We went to this like... Um, that l- little, um, aid, uh, little club on the corner? Uh, no, nah, it was one. It was like the main square of Glasgow. Yeah. Um, pretty well in the middle. And it was like this. It was like a disco nightclub. Yeah, right. No. Nah. It was full on. It was hell good. The one with the uh, wheel? With the wheel. You have a big like, wheel at the front? Mm, no, nah. too blind to remember. Nah, yeah, right. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> no, nah, we, we we were actually pretty tame in Glasgow. Yeah, um, we had just we went out for dinner for a few times, and we actually trained a little bit over there. Nice. So we get back into it, and then yeah, we went back down to the Leeds. Yep. Say they lost his passport, which was annoying. Oh man, I've done that before as well on a trip. There is nothing. Do you have to go get an emergency one? Yep. Oh, he went back man. home. I was in London for a little bit, and then went to Amsterdam for a couple of days. Nice. And then missed my flight to Paris, which was annoying. Then yeah, in London, caught up with uh, Jimmy Jordan, uh, Elijah Holland, and Sam Kavanagh. Just like a few of those boys, which was good fun. Yeah. Um, and then I sort of got, I was just by myself, and I didn't really like that. So I just sort of caught the next flight home, pretty much. So uh, let's talk about like a game day, right? What's like your game day routine and habits that you do? Um. Have oh, I should have any. Have we have? I like to sleep in a fair bit. Yep. And on away trips, we have like a ten a.m. walk, which is a bit annoying. I don't really like bit it because <laughs> I sort of like just doing my own thing. Yeah. And sort of just getting ready for the the game and like just like just whatever doing happens. your thing. Yeah. yeah. Um. But no, nah, we go for a little kick. Like wherever there's like around our area, I sort of go for a kick or whatever. And then nah, not really anything. Like yep. I sort of used to have stuff, but then it's sort of it's sort of like. If you have like things in place and you can't get them done, you sort of start stressing about so it. So freak about, yeah. Yeah, so then I just sort of a bit more carefree and just sort of whatever I feel like getting done, I get done. Yeah, nice, nice. And then actually at the game, do you do anything to like pump yourself up? Do you listen to any particular music or again, you're pretty f- chilled and pretty, pretty just free, chilled, pretty just sort of like get, flowing? Yeah, get that. I sort of make sure I get like my tape and all that sort of done yep. for the meeting. Um, yeah, no, I'm literally like, yeah, it's pretty weird. I sort of get a massage sometimes, go on the ground, have a few kicks. Yep. Sort of get all that done and then sort of sit around, talk a bit, a bit, talk sh- a bit of shit. Yeah, yeah. talk a bit of shit. So, yeah, talk a bit of shit with the boys. Um, and then, yeah, it's sort of just about it. Like, I'm pretty yeah, chilled nice. out for the game. And then right. once the game starts, we'll just sort of flick the switch, I guess. Absolutely. And then, like, reflecting on everything that you've done now and, you know, you're, you're performing at such an elite level, you're having an amazing season, you're, you know, the top percent 0.5 percent of uh, of the guys going around at the moment if you could reflect back on everything that you've done what would be one thing that you reckon you wish you did a little bit earlier Ooh. you mentioned like early on um you know look, looking back for that first that year first year yeah i guess the first year was probably another silver lining sort of thing yep so i probably wouldn't change that because that sort of taught me pretty quickly to yep. change to be professional yep um Probably my training. Yep. Probably just like, literally just like every every training, like pre-season, main training, just literally just like training as hard as I possibly could. Yep. And like putting every single like, just everything into that. I probably wasn't, I literally wasn't doing that. I would just go out there and just sort of do the contest block, which I love doing. 
and the other jewels I'd sort of just piss, well not piss fight around but I'd just sort of go wouldn't give it wouldn't be that same sort of intensity yeah and Goody would always bring it up to me and it's sort of like I was I'm pretty stubborn and I was just sort of like I didn't do that yeah like I said like I wasn't doing that but I was and then yeah he sort of sat me down in the 2020 and then yeah sort of since then I reckon probably yeah my game's probably changed it a fair bit since then I think it's I think the biggest takeaway that I've had from hearing everything that you've said is that your self-reflection is like top notch because a lot of people can go through some adversity and have things happen. And if you don't actually reflect on it and want to make changes, you won't do that. And I find that with working with, you know, athletes or with, you know, my personal training clients and everybody. So that just says how big part of self-reflection has uh, had on your career, which is just amazing. Yeah. It's huge. I think self-awareness is pretty big. Yeah. Like it's, it's huge. It's sort of, yeah, just looking back on it and, yeah, I, I'm, yeah. As I said before, I'm pretty stubborn. Yeah. But then once I actually look back on it, and I'm, I guess I'm pretty good at accepting that when I'm wrong. Yep. In a way, but people which is, which is hard to do. People like, probably won't say that, but yeah. to myself, like I'll. But yeah, but but the result is there because, like you said, you've the the proof in actually making those changes. That's yeah, there. Yeah. So. I'll probably eventually get there. Yeah. And then <laughs> it's a constant work in progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'll eventually get there, and I yeah, I do owe good you a lot because. Yeah, you always brought it up. Like I'd, I'd train like pretty average and I yeah. wouldn't push myself in the running and my skin folds weren't great and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, so those sort of things just, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah, you just got to keep working on it. It's a constant yeah. work in progress. Yeah. Absolutely. So then what do you do away from footy as well? What are you into? Uh, I imagine you're into the horses a little bit. Yeah, i got a few horses. Nice. So Run me through. What's the stable looking like? Uh, I've got about five or six. Yeah. Uh, Any guns? Uh, TikTok Queen won in the group three the other day, 87 bucks, which was oh, huge. Yeah. At 87? Yeah, it was huge. Oh. All the boys got on that, got on that back in December. Beautiful. Which was, yeah, unbelievable. Uh, so are these horses that there's a few guys in, involved with? Or yeah, me and Jimmy Jordan, who's yep. in Melbourne. Yep. Um, D Stormed, which is another one with uh, Bailey Fritch and uh, Jimmy Harms. Yep. That's running in two weeks, I think. Unreal. And then I've got two other horses with uh, Brent Kavanagh. Which yep. is uh, rising and freewheeler. Yep. And then well, I've got another one or two, I think. Yeah, just like young and they haven't any any names yet. Yeah, but they're great. like one or two year olds. How good! So how many is that? How many have you got? Total? We got five or six. Five or six. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Wow! Yeah. So your weekend's pretty full. We like do you travel around like well, as much as you can with footy to, to go to see them or? Oh no, not really. I'll, I'll go down to the stables a couple of times, have a look at them. Yep. Um. But yeah. Oh, oh sorry. Actually, I'm with Ace Budstock as well. Yep. And um. I've got a nice little two-year-old there, and they they're doing pretty well. They're going to ask for your horses. Um, yeah, they're like a like a new upcoming sort of a syndicate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They like buying stuff. I actually don't know what they do to be honest, but they like look after me pretty well. Yeah, cool. Yeah, sorry about. That. So, so yeah, the the group that you do the horses. With yeah, you. so Ace Buds look look after me and great. Yeah, they're sort of like they buy and sell horses. Um, yeah, they're doing a pretty good job there. Got a nice little stable going. And yeah, I enjoy that. Awesome. And do you reckon you'll ever actually get into, you know, training horses oh, I'd, or anything? I actually would or? love to do that. I was yeah. thinking about the other day. Yeah, it'd be a bit of fun. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So, And was there any other plan B for if footy, if footy didn't work out early on? Um, well, I probably wasn't ever really getting drafted, so I was sort of focusing a fair, a fair bit of time into my fo- uh, into my school. Yeah. Um, what, were you good, what were you good at? What were you wanting to do? I got 22 in English, so I was terrible with that. 22%? 22 out of 50 for my... Oh, yeah. For nice. the... For the last one, yeah. Like the... Literacy, new whatever the yeah, last yeah. one is. Yeah, yeah. Year 12 exam. Yeah, um, so I'm very bad at English. Um, can't speak very well, but <laughs> I'm all right with numbers. So, yeah, I sort of was looking at like radiography and... Radiography, really? Yeah, I don't know why. Wow. And then I started doing a commerce... As in, at 16, 17, you were like, yep, I want to do radiography. Yeah, I don't know why I said... I actually don't know why I did that, to be honest. But I started doing uh, commerce at Burwood. Yeah. After I got drafted, I didn't really enjoy that. But yeah, I didn't really have any idea. Yeah, right. To be honest. But dad's a plumber. Yep. And um, yeah, he sort of made that pretty clear that he, uh, I didn't want to do that when I was older. It's a shit job. Yeah. yeah I yeah. didn't want to do that. <laughs> he did not want to do that at all. Does he work for himself? He's got his own Yeah, business. he's his own company. Yeah, yeah. yeah nice yeah. one. And just see him out just working hard. Yeah. What'd your mum do? Uh, she was about... 15 different jobs. She's always she doing something. Yeah. On the hustle, just doing stuff. Yeah, she's always quitting jobs, changing jobs all the time. <laughs> yeah, I don't, know, I don't know what she's up to, to be honest. She's always doing something different. <laughs> and then for yourself for the rest of the year, have you got anything that you're wanting to work on, like personal goals or um, getting yourself back or what, what, what are you working on? Um, I actually had a chat about that the other day. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm not doing too much. 
Um, I probably should. Yeah. Um, Mate, you're just killing it. Are you, you're, you're underplaying all this stuff that you've done. Like, nah, you know, I, like, like from everything that you've said, it's super impressive for all the things that you've been able to change and do. So yeah. there's that. And then also, you're fucking killing it when you're playing. So nah. it is. <laughs> <laughs> I need to, uh, I sort of just, I don't know, I need to find something probably outside of footy. I, just, I sort of broke my hand around like 15, 16 last year. I was playing a fair bit of golf and I was yep. enjoying that. Um, that was a bit of fun. And then, yeah, I sort of stopped playing that. But outside of footy, like, I'm just, yeah, I do a lot of footy. Yep. I probably do need to find something outside of footy. That well, I think the other thing, but when, when you're at the top of the game like that, you've got to have full focus on doing that. And that's what that's what your week is revolving around is making sure yeah. you're performing on the weekend. I just sort of don't want to get to the end of my career and have any, like, uh, stones, like, unturned. Yep. Is that the... Yep, I, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I just sort of want to put all my... Eggs in that basket in a way and sort of just focus on footy and yep. yeah, I'm a bit weird like that. Sorry. No, it's I'm good. Well, that, that's what you have to be. You have to be that hyper yeah, focus to actually but, achieve. Yeah, everyone's different though. Like boys like Stevie May likes playing golf on his day off, but I'll go into Amy Park and do my weights, go for a swim, get my massage and all that. And yep. yeah, it just works for different people. Just on the fucking grind all yeah. the time, bro. It, it sort of works for different people though. So like everyone has a different mindset like day before a game, day after, like all that sort of stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And was there any – who did you go, uh, support growing up? Last one. I've got to ask this uh, early on. Um, was there anyone that you've matched up on early as well that you're like, oh, my God, I'm playing on this person or this person's running out next to me? No, nah, I used to barrack for Brisbane. Oh, Brisbane, really? Yeah, because I was like four or five and they were – And they were guns then. Yeah, yep, unbelievable. Yep. So they were winning, so you went, I'll have them. Yep. Yep. And then uh, I, I love Cripps. Like, I absolutely loved him. So in my draft interview, he was my favourite player. Yeah. And then, yeah, obviously get diverse him and he's unbelievable. Pretty cool. Yeah, and he's – Big boy, he's massive. very big boy. You're massive as well. No, I'm actually like compared to like Bontepelli, like, like yeah, he's yeah. huge. Everybody is huge. You don't realize until yeah. you stand next to him. You're like, holy fuck! I was <laughs> standing next to Crips the other week, or when we, I don't think we, I don't know when, when last we were, time you versed him. Yeah. yeah, whenever it was, and he's huge. Yeah. And then I was standing next to Connor Nash. Connor Nash is absolutely massive as well. <laughs> like these, some of the midfielders these days are just huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I used, to, I used to feel like I was like sort of tall and. Yeah, not really anymore. Not really, yeah. And was there anyone like early days that you went and matched up on that like gave you a bit of lip or anything? Are you pretty you're pretty chatty out there or no? Uh, who gave me a bit of lip? Jordan Lewis. Jordan Lewis? Absolutely ripped me. Did he? Abs <laughs> and like, like What'd he say? Oh, just everything. I'm the sun. <laughs> Currently say like just absolutely ripped me for no reason. <laughs> and it was just personal. Just, just going, kept going oh. at me. And I remember at the end of the year, I was like, fuck me, I hate this bloke. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely hate him. Like I got asked it the function like Who's the most hated player in the NFL? I was like, I was like, oh, I don't really hate anyone. Like everyone's pretty good. And then, literally, probably about a month later, Jordan Lewis got drafted or traded to uh, Melbourne. Melbourne, you're like, thank God I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh my god. But yeah, he's very fun. He's like, literally looked after me from day one. Awesome, mate. Awesome. Well, um, thank you so much for coming and doing this potty, mate. It's been so good to uh, finally meet yeah. you, catch up. Um, you're an absolute legend. Like I said, you're doing incredible things on the field, and um, there's so much to take away from uh, from everything that you just told me there. So thank you so much for sharing it. Uh, good luck for the rest of the year. Let's get that hammy back. Let's yeah. get the fucking brown low votes. Finish off the year, baby. Beautiful. Thanks, yeah. for, thanks for having me. Beautiful. Too, too good.